So this is awesome. Got a bit of a bit of a busy one tonight. Lots of people on. Lots of people who haven't been here for a while are joining. Good to see everybody. Helen Lewis is here as well. Just joined over on uh, on Twitter. And um, thanks to everyone who's sharing this right now. If you share it on Facebook, tag an actor in it. You know what? Tag an actor in it. If you're sharing this on Twitter um, as well, retweet it and just tag someone in it. Um, that would be massively helpful. Someone who you like, who's a positive soul or maybe needs an injection of positivity into their life right now because that's what they're kind of be looking at tonight. Uh, what I want to do over the next few broadcasts because we are now in, well, you know, practically through the first week um, of December. Uh, I know it's a Monday now, but it's already uh, Monday the 4th of December. First week of December is nearly done. Uh, it's only really three weeks left um, for us to get ahead of the pack. So I started doing a bit of coaching on getting ahead of the pack six weeks, well, so like three weeks ago, uh, roughly six weeks before um, Christmas, because they're the weeks that everyone winds down, stops really working, starts thinking, oh, it's, you know, it's all right for me to just get fat now and relax and get full of Christmas cheer and I'll get ready for the new year in the new year. The winners, the thoughtful ones like us, everyone who's on here now, rather than watching I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here in the UK, um, you're not going to do that. You are going to be like, right, how can I use these next few weeks to plan to get ahead? So in January, when all the other actors are crawling out of a, you know, a comatose, alcohol-fueled, Christmas pudding-fueled stupor, you're there like, right, I'm already running. I'm ready to smash it. And that's what we're going to be, uh, we're going to be looking at. Tonight, we're looking at one of my favorite topics just in personal development. And I think it's fascinating. It's one of my most fascinating kind of subjects of uh, the human condition and that is fear and I know people are on here going Ross we've looked at fear all right Jamie uh, we looked at fear loads and loads and loads of times on these scopes yeah we have it's something that will still never go away from your life though you're always going to uh, going to feel fear we looked at Susan Jeffers book on the book club on a Wednesday night feel the fear and do it anyway a fantastic book sort of looking at how you can control fear in your life but tonight we're going to be looking at three specific types of fear that really screw you up, your acting career up, your life up, basically. And I don't think many people in here will even be aware of the subtleties of these three different types of fear and how they've actually affected you in 2017. So let me throw up these slides here. I'm trying not to use swear words these days because I think it's uncouth, but I have had to, just to hit the message home here, I've starred it and censored it for those on the audio experience, but I've put the three types of fear that are effing up your acting career. And you can actually apply this. It's transposable to your life, guys. Like this is the three types of fear that just screw up every single thing in your life, your health, your relationships, your wealth, your career, everything. Um, so take take notes of this. And if you're watching on the replay, if you're actually watching the replay on YouTube or on atsonthis.tv, you can download the slides that you're going to see on the screen now by just clicking the link beneath this video. If you're watching live tonight, by all means, take some screenshots of them because this is important. So let's have a little uh, a little look. We've already done the share thing, but if you um, would be, be kind enough to give this a share if you haven't already, massively would appreciate that. Tag an actor in it. Tag, just tag anyone in it. You know, Tag your mum in it. Um, she'll benefit from this as well, regardless of whether she's a uh, an actor or not. Um, but I want to, um, yeah, just look at fear tonight. And this is really going to be helpful for you. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of homework to do at the end of this that I do want you to do tonight. It's only going to take you five minutes, but it's going to have a big impact, right? So as I said at the start of this, how many times, Lowry's here, or Lo Lowry, or oh, I don't know if I'm saying your name right, but thank you for joining us on Facebook. How many times have we spoken about fear? Lots, haven't we, right? We've covered the topic of fear countless times on these live broadcasts tonight's live broadcast is number 235 so thank you for sticking with me over these years whilst we do these but because we've covered it before it doesn't mean that we'll never feel it again you've probably felt fear to a certain degree today and it might have only been oh my goodness i've only got three weeks to go to christmas and i bought no christmas presents you know, that in itself, that anxious feeling, that's still fear. To a certain degree, you're still feeling it, even on the, you know, the, the very subtle, tiny little things in your life, seemingly insignificant things. Um, tonight, um, no lip from you, Stephen. He's saying homework. I'm 21, not 12. Well, start acting it, sunshine. All right. Um, he's a mentalist. It's all right, Steve. He had a mulled wine at the Christmas markets with us on Saturday. Suck him over the edge. Um, Right, listen, right, so you're, never, you're always going to feel fear. Tonight, I want to explore how much, though, fear has played a part in your life and in your acting career in 2017, okay? And I just want everyone to be honest. It's definitely played a part in my, in my career. It's played a part in my personal life 100%. Um, it's not really played a part in my online businesses, I'm happy to say. That's all good. My personal life, it's definitely played a part in my acting career. Occasionally, it has. Um, but let's have a look at what sort of part it's played in your life this year. Um, let's move on this slide. Have you honestly, because we're going to look at goal setting as well over the next couple of weeks, have you honestly 
achieved what you wanted from your life and career in 2017, right? And we've kind of asked this question or pondered upon it a couple of weeks ago when we started looking at getting ahead, like I say, getting ahead of the pack by focusing on this stuff now rather than on New Year's Eve. Are you where you had hoped to be? Tony says definitely has played a part in his personal life as too. I think Dawn said massively as well. It is like, it's just so prevalent, isn't it? It's something that you can you can talk and talk and talk about and, um, you know, kind of feel you've got a grip of, but you will still always, if you are growing anyway in life, you will still always come up against this. And it's a good thing. You know what? If you're feeling fear, guys, and you have felt it this year, that's pretty good in a way because it means that you have at least been thinking of doing things bigger than you are right now. You've been trying to, you know, at least contemplate pushing yourself further and becoming more than you already are. Okay, we just want to look at how it's actually maybe stopped you from following through on those thoughts and what we can do about that. So are you where you really, you know, if you set your goals in 2016 at the end of last year, this time last year, are you where you would hope to be right now? Have you done all the things in and out of your acting career that you thought you you wanted to do this year? Like I say, for me, um, the, I've, I can tick a lot of boxes, but for me, do you know what? Fear's played a part in my life this year, buying property. And it played a part in my life the year before. I need to get a grip on that part of my life and need to bite the bullet and stop waiting for the perfect property to come up. And go, actually, you know what? For me to advance my career onwards and my life and everything about it, I need to kind of like get a hold on that and just go, right, I'm going to bite the bullet. There is no, no perfect scenario here. But I've held back from properties that in hindsight I should have bought. Definitely should have bought. And now they've gone way up in price. I'm like, well, now if I wanted it, I couldn't get it. Um, fear has definitely played a part there. So I know I am not where I wanted to be in 2016 and 2017. I'm no longer, I'm not where I wanted to be when I set my goals in 2016 with regards to that. Had a good year, said Tony. Didn't reach all my goals, but had some pleasant surprises that took priority. Well, that's nice. It's always nice as well. You know what? It's fine as well, guys, to um, to not hit goals that actually you realize throughout the year didn't mean as much to you anymore. You know, and you're like, my circumstances have changed. I don't need to hit that goal anymore. I can throw that away. Um, that's okay as well. It's like I'm pulling the brake on my train, but I need to leave it alone and keep going, says Rebecca. Well, that's good, good awareness. James says, I thought too much what I wanted instead of just saying F it and doing it. It's only the last couple of weeks I've done without thinking and, that, uh, and that's a scary thing, but fun. It is, and that's what we're going to look at. Fear is spoiling my life right now in health, with health and career, says Dawn. Well, let's have a look at that. I found through setting goals, I find others which I didn't know I wanted initially. That's good as well, Fanny. Uh, well, let's have a look at, um, at what we can do about this fear then that we've all been feeling in certain areas of our lives this year, whether we've let it rule us or not. Um, I don't think you can ever know too much about this, all right? So if you haven't felt fear this year, like I said, you've probably been holding back. So it's good that everyone here has felt it. I think that's always a good thing to go, oh, that's a bit scary because at least you're not just sitting on your backside doing nothing, okay? But we want to look tonight if you've allowed it to stop you this year and stop you from actually breaking out your comfort zone, achieving more and becoming more than you already are. Let's look at three types of fear that usually screw people up. Saffron, good evening. Saffron joins us on Facebook. Um, and, let's, and we're going to look at what we can do about them. It's all right, you know, knowing about this stuff. But let's have a look at actually how we need to try and take control of this. The first fear that everybody feels when they think of doing something new is what I call loss pain. Okay, these are all, these are three types of pain, effectively. Fear is pain. Sometimes it manifests itself into actual physical pain. You know, people end up with stomach cramps and feeling like they're having heart attacks and panic attacks, all that sort of stuff. But the initial thing when you feel fear, the initial fear is loss pain. And what I mean by this, let me explain to you. Loss pain is, is exactly that. It's a loss, right? You say it to yourself, if I change my life or do this new thing, I'll experience loss, okay? And because I experience loss, I don't want to do it. Now, this doesn't mean the outcome, that's something different. This is the loss of what you've already got. So the perceived loss could be anything from, I had this when I was, give me some examples of this in your life. Loss of security. I had this when I was 11 years ago when I was working in a toy shop, as everybody knows, for minimum wage, having left drama school and just basically hit my head against a brick wall for four years. Working in this toy shop that I'd hated, a computer game shop, I called it a toy shop. Um... And I was like, if I leave this shithole of a job that's paying me next to nothing, I will lose my security. Thus, the idea of jumping ship and getting away from the shop brings about fear. 
Thus, I don't want to do it. And I stayed in that job for at least five years too long. Seriously, I left drama school um, and I was still in that job three and a half, four years later. I should not have been there, but it took a lot of courage and basically understanding and personal development and really diving deep into my life and what I wanted. It also took my dad to die, which is a massive trigger in my life to actually go, right, get out of this shop. You know, had he stayed alive and still been alive today, you know what? God knows. Actually, you know what? God knows what, where I would be, what I would have done. Hopefully, I still would have hit that same conclusion that I was, that life was short and I was there way, way too long. Um, but loss of security is a big one, you know. Loss of a relationship is also a big one. I see people not wanting to really go for their goals because their spouse is not as ambitious as them. And their spouse is the one who's thinking, well, if you do that, we'll lose our security. We won't have your money coming in. Thus, please don't do that. And in a way, without them even knowing it sometimes, they end up manipulating their partner. Um, not callously, but basically clips their wings to go, oh no, you know, don't do that because what if all this happens and this terrible stuff happens and then and then we won't be able to do that and it'll all fall apart. Um, so people feel that, you know, if they have success, they will lose their relationship, you know, or if their partner has success, their partner will no longer want to be with them because they'll find somebody better, et cetera, et cetera. Um, loss of pleasure, so, for example, I, you know, say, for instance, you're like, I want to lose two stone this year. Maybe some people set physical and, you know, body composition goals at the start of this year. Um, and they haven't hit them because the loss of pleasure of food and the thought of that was too much for them. Like, oh, I won't be able to eat my favorite cake or I won't be able to have my favorite caramel latte every morning or I won't be able to drive through Starbucks drive through and get a muffin in the morning or whatever it is. And that loss and that fear of loss has stopped them from taking action on their on their physical goals. Um, and then you've got just loss of benefits as well in terms of, you know what, they can literally be benefits in terms of in the UK. Tony, you know, benefits, you're in the States, I don't know what you call them over there. But when people claim benefits over here in terms of income and tax credits and tax and um, income benefits, you know, um, sometimes people are like, well, if I go that extra mile and I start earning more money, it's going to put me in a different tax bracket. Thus, I'll actually lose these benefits that I'm getting at the moment and these tax credits, et cetera, et cetera. And they focus on that. But any benefit could be a perk. Like you're working in a shit old job. You might be like, I, for me, I was working at a computer game shop, but I got 25% discount on those computer games. Well, if I leave this job, I'm going to lose my 25% discount <laughs> on these computer games. Crazy. But this loss pain is the first thing that kicks in. Does people get it? Is that making sense to people? It's the first thing that kicks in when you think of change. Going for something you haven't gone for before. Wanting to be more than you already are. Thinking of that acting job. Who, for instance, you know, this happened to me when I first started in my acting career. I'd be like, I want an audition. I really want an audition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'd, my agent would call me with an audition. I'd shit myself phone would go down and go oh my god do i really want an audition this is scary again fear would kick in loss pain would kick in you know there's all kinds of things um that happen when you when you kind of dream big and start getting what you want it can be just as scary i'm there says rebecca honestly it'll go the more auditions you get that goes rebecca but um but yeah i think we've all felt that if we're honest with ourselves we're like holy crap now I actually need to step up because the thing that I said I wanted is here and I've got no excuse now um but yeah you know that's again it, kind of instinctual this this fear of loss or what am I gonna lose if I go into this James says after my nan died in February I left my agent who I'd been with for a couple of years because I wanted better it was difficult because I thought I wouldn't get another one wouldn't be able to work that scared me but I remember my nan telling me, no matter what, you have one life, live it because you don't want to regret anything. Great advice, James. People only get this kind of, sometimes this awareness though at their end of their life, man. It's good that we're kind of getting it now whilst we've still got plenty of time on the clock. Um, so let's have a look. So that's the, uh, yeah, that's, that's some examples of this perceived loss that you can have in your life if you make some change, all right? The main issue with loss pain is that we are following up our what if statements. We all subconsciously create these what if statements when we think of doing something. Well, what if this happens? What if that happens? We instinctively follow these what if statements up with negative bullshit by default because we are wired that way with our negativity bias as, um, as psychologists call it. 
you've got to substitute the negative for the positive. We all know that, but you've got to be really mindful when it comes to fear. Otherwise, you won't do this. So you say, you know, what if I end up with way more freedom? Yes, I'm going to lose the security. Evening, Brian, of this dead end job that I was in that's paying me 12 grand a year. But you know what? Yes, I might lose that. But what if I end up with way more freedom in my life to actually do the things that I want? If it's a relationship thing that you're holding back from, well, you know what? What if it all goes right and I fall in love with the person who I spend the rest of my life with? We have kids and amazing family, you know, and stuff that like you just never dream possible. But if you hold back and the lost pain of, oh, well, you know, if I got with somebody right now, I would lose my spare time. Well, what if it all went incredibly well and look at all the stuff that you gained? Um, what if I end up living 10 years longer for those who are like, you know what, I'm, I I'm, don't want to give up this food that I've got. Or those who are thinking of giving up smoking, you know, the uh, people have lost pain over smoking breaks at work. Well, if I give up smoking, I won't be able to go out every hour or whatever for five minutes and have that camaraderie with the other smokers in the in the yard. They're afraid of losing that. And that's insane. You're afraid of losing multiple times a day to fill your lungs with poison and toxic chemicals. But it's lost pain that people have. They feel part of a gang and a belonging. Like, I'm going to lose that. I'm not going to be part of that crowd who make me feel one of them. Um, but, you know, what if you live 10 years longer? That's what you should be focusing on. And then what if I feel so much happier? You know, that's you can apply that to every one of those those uh, fears from uh, from that previous slide. You know, if you, you lose that benefit that I've got on the screen there at the bottom, well, actually, what if you end up feeling so much happier even though you don't have that benefit. Um, Steve says, I'm not afraid. I just don't want to. Oh, Steve, man, you, 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 for your health, though, dude, if people are smoking these days, and you're 21, mate, you need to know better. Like, I can understand people in their 60s and 70s when they used to go into the doctor's surgeries and doctors would be there smoking, going, yes, what can I do for you? 21, Steve, you've got no excuse, man. You're educated. You know you know the, the implications. Um we need to we need to get you to quit, man. Um, so yeah, so what we've got to do is we've got to really substitute those negative what if statements for positive what if statements. Has anyone got any, anything on here they want to admit to being afraid of right now? And, th and, and, and an example of the loss that they might feel if they go for this change. Just interested to know. Um, let me uh, let me know. I'm 21. I've been at it for 10 years. It ain't happening, Steve, man. You're stronger than that. It's just a weak statement. People think they can't do it. Uh, I blew an audition because of fear. Well, tell us about that, Dawn. What did you? What were you actually afraid of happening? Because this is the thing, right? All fear is really is a faulty way of you dealing with a situation in your life and a psychological process in your head. That's all fear is. I don't know anyone who's ever died of an audition, so I don't know why we're all so afraid of them. Um, I have lots of disempowering what ifs around my schedule. Interesting. So it's really interesting this for me, Tony, schedule wise at the moment. I have never been as maxed out in my life. That's why I replied to your email today, two weeks after you sent it. Um, but I've also never felt more alive <laughs> because I've got so much on. Once I've finished this broadcast tonight, I've been working since half eight this morning, sat at this desk consistently the whole day. Um, and I'm still going to tidy and hoover this office when I finish this broadcast tonight. I'm going to go to bed feeling utterly like the tank is empty, but it feels so great to go. I've given it everything today. Going for acting jobs and losing my regular pay jobs to David, not enough money in some of the auditions. Yeah, I mean, you've got to pick your fights, David. Obviously, um, you know, you've got to uh, weigh up and do some due diligence, but not to the point where you obsess about it. This is what happens, and we spoke about this on, on, uh, on last Monday's scope. People think about something they want to do. They get excited about it. And then they don't take action on it right away. So what they end up doing is they end up actually thinking about the thoughts and then having thoughts about the thoughts and ultimately talking themselves out of doing it because of all this fear that, that just arises if you don't take action quickly. Um, so you don't want to overthink stuff. You want to do, you know, when it's acting jobs, can I take this if it means I can't do this regular job? Um, pick your fights. But there's got to come a point where you leap, man. Otherwise, you're going to be... The, 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 the awful situation, just the brutal reality of all of this, if, if you take one thing away tonight from, from this, for all those working in that nine-to-five job, is that really, if, they, if you're never going to just feel the fear and do it anyway, like the brutal reality is you're always going to be in that job. There's, there's, there's two people at my old job 
I mean, this is like seven, eight years after I left, who are still there now. And they're getting on for like 22, 23 years of service in that industry, that industry that I've heard them say many times in the early 2000s they were going to leave. Um, there comes a point where it's like, well, if if not now, when? Because it's probably never going to come around. Um, so look at doing something about it in 2018, guys. I just think it's important. Don't just, you know, walk out and just go into having no backup. But look at transitioning out. Don't go home at six o'clock like many people do after a hard day's work as they see it and then just spend six till 10.30 watching Stranger Things or having, a, you know, pigging out and watching Netflix because you've got from 7 a, 7 p.m. till, I don't know, 1 a.m. to actually put some hustle in. And you do that every day for three months. You can get some massive, massive work done in that time to set something else up that you want to do, start earning you know, some income doing some other stuff and start transitioning out of that shit job. Two, this is why people won't do that though. Process pain. This is the second type of fear and how it manifests itself. Process pain. One of the biggest, I think, and this is this is something that plays into everybody's head the minute they start thinking about changing their health, particularly. Process pain will cripple you even further. Um, this is where people like make the fear of difficulty in doing something much louder than the excitement of the possibility of it working. I say this quite a lot. I'm like, you need to make you need to make that fear of you know a negative outcome way way quieter, you know, than the excitement of a positive one. But again, by default, we don't do this. A person who thinks of quitting smoking, for instance, Ste, might think right of all the negatives, they don't focus on the freedom of quitting smoking. Think how much money for a start you'd save, mate. I mean, that's got to be a massive motivator. They're not thinking of being able to breathe and get up the stairs more easily, you know, and go running and, you know, and, and actually being alive to watch their grandkids grow up. They're not thinking of all those things when they're like, I've got to quit smoking. They're thinking about the process of dealing with quitting the addiction, withdraws from it frustration potential shakes and like kicking off on people and you know how challenging all that is going to be thus they don't even try and quit because that process fear you know the process pain is just so loud in their heads like oh so much easier not to try and bother i enjoy it. you say you enjoy it steve but this is the thing as well right and i hope this never happens to you I, I can give you as much information on why you should quit as possible, but in your head, if your belief system is telling you right now that smoking equals pleasure, no amount of information on the planet is going to stop you from doing that right now if you don't want to. And I hope this never happens. I've seen this happen in somebody this week who had an incident with their health and their heart, and they had an, an experience which is way different to information and that experience of literally nearly dying has now well that that itself is way louder than all of the information they had that now means smoking equals death equals leaving my wife a widow equals leaving my daughter without a father etc 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 and it's the experience, the same with people who are overweight and then suddenly have a heart attack. Food equals pleasure before that point. When they have an experience where, holy shit, food equals death, then they take a whole different look and it literally changes the way that their brain is wired and their belief system. You're only 21, Steve. I hope it never happens to you. You've probably got a lot of, a lot of time still to do it before you would build up any kind of issue like that. But you've got to start looking at you know, I think the fear, the fear of actually what if I end up having a health issue in this instance, we need a bit of fear as opposed to feeling that we're invincible. And it's not going to happen. But most people, when they think of giving up smoking, don't do it because of the process and the process pain. Um, but what we've got to do um, is have a look at, um, think of that cigarette break as putting toilet water on. <laughs> yeah, just go, you know. Just go, look, I'm going to, instead of having this break, I'm going to go and freshen up. Um, it's part of the mastery of life, though, guys, right, is learning to see change as a game. I quite like it now. Challenges are something that we can joyously enter into. 
um, to become the master of our own lives. So whereas when we feel process pain, we look at the challenge as something bad. Actually, like the challenge is, is, is most of the fun. It's like, it's, it's probably all of the fun. The challenge is generally more fun than the actual thing in the end because when you've got it, you're just going to move on to something else. Um, challenge is good. Challenge will help us reach our highest self. Without it, it's just, um, well, I don't know. There's nothing There's nothing in life. Um, I, I, I missed your question there, Fanny. I'll read it again in a second if you, if you put it again. Um, but ultimately, yeah, the process can be engaging. It can be fun. It can be exciting. It can be new. If you're like, I, can't, I don't want to go into the, into the gym because I'm afraid of the process. It's going to be hard. I'm going to hurt. It's going to ache. Oh, man, there's nothing better than seeing progress of it, uh, in your body and on your physicality in the gym. Yes, those first six weeks are not the most pleasant. But when you see the results, it's incredible. Um, it's uh, embrace the magic. Embrace the magic, Bobby. That's exactly what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, the process of working out can be fun. If you can enjoy the process of working out, then the six pack at the end of it is like the ice on the cake. If you don't like your present... Oh, Fanny, I've missed it again. I hope you copied and pasted it. If you're writing long comments, if you, if you make sure they're copied to your clipboard before you ask them, you can just keep pasting it in and I can't miss it then. Apologies to actually to write that, <laughs> write that out again. Um, but yeah, it can bring, you know, change in the process can bring variety and spice into our lives. Um, and we can look forward then to the process of change because it's always adding something to our lives. It's not taking away. And when we switch our minds like that, we're going to embrace change more often. Eating clean was brutal, but now helps with body confidence I never had. Helps with auditions, says Tony. Absolutely. Absolutely. And people need to realize every part of your life affects every part of your life. I've not said that for a while, but it does. If you are becoming more confident in your body, Tony, guess what happens? You walk out the house in a way more empowered manner. If you walk out the house in a way more empowered manner, you speak to people differently. We all have the thought that is whatever it is will never happen to us. So live the lifestyle. Yes, people don't think anything bad's going to happen to them. Uh, but yeah, you walk out the house and you speak to people better, Tony. Thus, people react to you better. Uh, what if you don't like your present behaviours, but you cannot stop repeating the same habitual actions? Uh, well, there comes a point where where a couple of things kind of have to have to happen. One, you've got to stop kidding yourself that you're not in control of it because that's just nonsense. A lot of people, are like, I can't help it. Yes, you can. You really can. Um, you need to look at, at at what point is practical to continue those actions, and. Even like at the most basic level, if people are telling me like, look, I can't help this, you know, this, I have no control over this, it still never makes it right, does it? It never, ever makes it right. And you telling yourself that you can't control it or you can't help it is weak bullshit. I'm like, you've just got to change it. You've got to change it up. Substitute that behavior for something better. Um, you know, take that, that thing out of your environment. Because we often follow the path of least resistance. If you have an issue with alcohol and you have a bottle of whiskey in the house, chances are you're going to drink it. Um, don't buy it. Pour it away. Um, if you you know have issues with uh, well anything, you can work that the other way as well. Um, if you want to take up something, make it the path of least resistance. If you want to learn to play the guitar, don't keep it in a cupboard. Keep it in the middle of your lounge so you walk past it every day. If one can control it, why are we not for years? I'm guessing is what the scope is about. Because because you, you I don't think you want it enough. If you're saying you can't control it, you don't want to control it enough because you would do it. You would take the action congruent with what you're telling me you want. Anything in my life I've wanted to do that I've you know I've really wanted to do, I think I've done. Um, even if it's taken years and years and years until I literally hit rock bottom. No, I do want to, but fall over and over and over. Well, you need to tell me how you're falling over and over and over and, and, and what in what. What's the thing you want to change? Change comes when you're ready for it. Definitely does, I think. There's been times in my life with a couple of things definitely um, had to kind of hit rock bottom with it. I have an addiction to watch Ross. What can I do about that behavior? Nothing, Tony, and nothing should be done about it. That's perfect behavior. I despise many, my, many actions I'm taking and yet I'm not changing. Again, we need to look at... at uh, you know, how much you want it. I, I, for years, told myself I couldn't be a morning person. And I tried on multiple occasions to do it. Getting up early in the morning, I'd do it for three days on the trot, like half six in the morning. And then I'd be like, I just can't do this. This is ridiculous. Until I absolutely, yes, it took years, but about two years ago, I committed to it with everything I had. 
Um, and um, it, it, it works, you know? It's, it's like I literally, when I wake up in the morning... Sometimes, honest to God, when I when I wake up and I dr- I drag my ass out of that bed, oh, I'm almost in physical pain where I'm like crying inside, going, I don't have to walk 15 minutes down to the gym in the pitch black and the rain. I don't drive because I can't because of my eyes. Every single morning I've got to do that. But the thought of letting myself down and then waking up at say half nine having not been when I would normally be home, showered, dressed, ready to work. I make that fear of that so much louder than the, you know, the fear of the process of going that I, I it forces me to do it. You've got to raise your standards, guys. If you want to have a better life, the first thing you do is raise your standards, raise what you demand from yourself and also what you demand from other people. So that's surely a self-worth issue then, letting yourself down. It's, it's discipline. It's not, it's, it's not chastising yourself enough or it's not holding yourself accountable or it's playing the victim. It's something along those lines of going, look, you know, it's okay to slack off. It's okay not to do that. And ultimately, it's not okay. And it never makes it right by saying, oh, well, you know, I'm, I obviously can't do it then, or I'm just lazy, or, you know, you can. You can do anything. If there's someone else on the planet who uh, looks like you and has achieved what you want, you can do it as well. So why do some have the discipline and some don't? Because they, so the people who have the discipline are the ones who commit to making a change and uh, and really want it really 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 want it same in the acting industry those want those actors who really want it and really commit will go all in on something until they've got it those ones who it's that old adage isn't it if you you know if you really really want it you're going to find a way if you don't you're going to find an excuse and people will, I could find that excuse every morning not to get out of bed to go, oh, you know, I had a really late night last night or yeah, I've got all that to do. I've got all this work to do. You know, you just got to, you know, get rid of those, suffocate those excuses because you can, if you want to, you know, you're saying, I think it's about your physicality, Fanny, and you want to, you know, work out, be healthier. If you really, really wanted to do it, there's nothing stopping you. You're physically able, you're young enough, you know, mobile enough. If you're not doing it, then you're not holding yourself accountable and you need to develop that discipline slowly, schedule stuff, make things the path of least resistance, get your stuff ready for the gym the night before. I make my mornings the easiest way possible by literally, I've done it already, my track pants are through in the other room there with my keys in them, with my headphones in them, my gym card in them, my trainers are laid out, my socks are laid out and I'm going to put this t-shirt on in the morning because um, I'm only working out in it. Um, so I get up in the morning. I don't have to fit. I don't have to like process anything psychologically. All I need to do is throw some clothes on and wander to the bathroom, clean my teeth. Go and I says I'm out of the house. I want it more than anything and cry myself to sleep over my physique. So why isn't it happening? Well, because well, why, 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 why? Tell me, like, what stopped you today from from exercising at home? Even you don't have to go out and do it or go to a gym. If you say people say oh, I've got no money. Um, You know, what's stopping you from going, right, I'm going to spend 20 minutes, that's it. Everyone's got 20 minutes in the day, no matter how busy you are. Um, 20 minutes. I plan my timetable, but no. I don't think you'd, I think you are letting, you'd letting yourself off. You're not holding yourself accountable then. You're you're looking for something that isn't there. You're looking for a reason for like, there must be something that's wrong with me or there must be something there's, there's there's something like that's there to stop me doing this there has to be something um and you're looking for that it's like a lot of people are looking for the answer to something incredible about there's got to be a meaning to this or that or there's got to be a way to this there's not all there is is hard work and patience there's nothing else but hard work and patience and if you can couple those two things together you're dangerous in every single area of life um and if you you know you start off by but that's it. But again, so you say, no, I berate myself constantly saying you're so lazy and so on. Um, but that's the, being unkind to yourself is a negative thing as well. It's not that. It's about holding yourself accountable, going, right, let's have a little word with myself. I want to be in better shape. Okay. Thank you, my, you know, brain for telling me all the things that could potentially go wrong if I, if I go for this or all the pain I'm going to feel. If I go for this, I appreciate you trying to look after me. You try to stop me from doing that. But however, I would really like to do that. 
realize they're getting shaved is going to make me feel better. I'm going to get excited about how I'm going to look. I'm going to get excited about how my clothes are going to fit me better, excited about the opportunities it might give me in the acting industry. I'm going to feel excited about living longer, feeling healthier. Um, and I'm going to make that louder than this voice in my head that's saying, oh, what if all this stuff happens? And what if it's really hard and you can't do it? And you've never been able to do it before because you're just lazy. That's just unkind. Don't listen to those voices. We need to cultivate way more positive um, self-talk, um, definitely. Um, but you've, you've got to, honestly, there comes a point where you go, I'm not going to play the victim anymore. I'm, gonna, I'm standing up for myself and I'm doing this myself. Another reason why you might not be taking action, Fanny, is the third fear I want to look at tonight, and that's outcome pain. This is another thing that, you know what, this might be something if you tried it before, Fanny, that's blocking you right now as well. And this is basically where people say to themselves, again, negative self-talk. What if I go through all of that, all that process fear, we just looked at the process pain. What if I go through all of that and the grass isn't greener? So what if I go through all of that and I still don't look better? I still don't lose weight. I still don't, you know, uh, get stronger, et cetera, et cetera, if you're going to be, you know, looking at going to the gym. If you're stuck thinking this way, you have already lost big time because you're never going to try anything if you're like, well, it's never going to work anyway or, you know, well, what if what if it all comes tumbling down or it's all pointless? Um, you're going to say things to yourself like, when I start that diet, I'm going to enjoy tasting new foods. You're not going to concentrate on the, on the fear of losing the shit food you're currently eating, you know, because you'll say to yourself, look, I haven't tasted good food for a long time. I'll actually enjoy going out with people again. I'm going to enjoy shopping again to find clothes that fit my body. Again, it's about making the excitement of the outcome and the possibility way louder than the potentially unwanted outcome where it doesn't all work out for you. I had to commit to a low carb to lose weight. I didn't lose as much as people, but it's my journey. Um, and it is just a matter of, honestly, I've seen people who I train with, I've been training for years and years and years now, and I just was never in shape. I was always just a little bit kind of chunk, not chunky, but just like, just not in shape. Just didn't really have a shape. You know, not great, little bit flabby. And it is pretty simple um, when you commit to a lifestyle and you get excited about it and you get excited about trying new things that might be healthier. And then it just becomes part of what you do and your standards raise without even thinking about it. Because I remember one, I remember very specifically, I used to go in the pub every Thursday night to do the pub quiz with my mates when I was about 21. And I started going to the gym and I'd just done quite a long session for an hour in the gym before this one. This is the first time I've been in the, in the pub on a Thursday after doing a gym session. And I went to the bar and the girl behind the bar said, usual. And I used to have a bottle of Bex every time I went to the bar, a bottle of Bex beer. And I remember saying to her, no, no, so I said, I'm just going to have a black currant and soda water. And she was like, what? It's not like you. I've been going in there for years. And I was like, I don't want to undo all the good I've just done. And it was at that point where I realized without me even thinking about it on a subconscious level, my standards had raised because I didn't want to waste all that hard work. I've been afraid of taking steps to be a model as I'm worried about being rejected for being short. You just got to do it. So you're worrying about something that might never happen. This is what a lot of us do. We rob ourselves of the present and enjoyment because we fear a future that might never even occur. You'll never know whether your height or whatever is going to be an issue in anything until you've done it. So let's in 2018, guys, honestly, let's and let's start, you know, making plans to do this today and putting some foundational work down. Let's start doing the things we've been afraid to do this year. Um, but, yeah, we've got to make this 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 excitement louder. If you obsess about the positives that change will bring, then you will win. And you've almost got to have like an unshakable self-belief and an unshakable faith that it's all going to work out for the good. Society has made us believe we're not enough to. There's this massive social pressures, Rebecca, on you know whether we can and we can't do things. Um, but you've, oh, I just wish I could get everybody on here to just try that thing they've been putting off. And you're going to see that it's nowhere near, the process is nowhere near as hard, it's nowhere near as scary. It can be enjoyable. You'll find other people along the way on the same journey as you. You can team up with, particularly if you if it's a health goal and you walk into a gym, particularly in January when everybody's going to be there. Um, you know, you've got to, uh, you've just got to do it. As Susan Jeffers says, feel the fear and do it anyway. And the, and her whole point behind that is that actually, if you don't, if you don't, um, 
it's about saying to yourself, I'm going to handle whatever happens. If you don't believe you can handle it, the fear will cripple you. But if you're like, no matter what happens in my life, I'm just going to handle it. Then you ultimately can go into any situation in your life without having to control it. Thus, there is nothing ever to be afraid of because you don't have to have control. You're like, if it, if it goes this way or that way, I'm just going to handle it. It's fine. Do that in the audition room you've won. Do it in relationships you've won. Um, probably every area of life. If you're like, look, whatever goes, I will handle it. And then I'm just going to enjoy the process. Uh, but we need to start obsessing about the positives that change will bring, not the negatives. Any recommendations for how to maybe bulletproof our mindset and get over these fears? <sighs> bulletproof acts from unstoppable confidence, infinite success. Tony, you need to do the program, man. I'm going to be launching this program again in February. Start of February. It's a five-week program that I run just once a year, maybe twice tops. Go to bulletproofactor.com. I mean, that's like super in-depth. A lot of these things and these fears, guys, will also have been triggered in really formative years. And you'll be living with limiting beliefs based on things that happened to you when you were 9, 10, 12, 15, 25, however old you are, where you were told a certain thing about yourself that your subconscious ended up honoring. It was never meant to be a belief of yours, but it, you honored it regardless, and it holds you back today. You were told you were fat at school, and you're still fat today because you believe that that's just how you are, and it's not. It really isn't. Um, what book was on the other day with the silence challenge? Anthony Mindel's book um, called At Left Brain Turn Right. We're going to be looking at it for one last time on Wednesday night, Rebecca. Um, but yeah, these limiting beliefs, guys, like can stay with you forever if you don't deal with them. The whole program that I run for Bulletproof Actor really deals with that at its absolute core and basically strips your entire life down, your entire existing life story, and then we build a brand new one for you that should empower you moving forward. Um, there's a story you should be living, not the one that's fueled by things like fear and, uh, you know, anxiety and envy and all these, you know, bad emotions if you let them rule you. Um, but yeah, in terms of, I think, Tony, in terms of like, you know, if you want to get over some of this fear quite simply, is you start taking more action. We looked at last Monday, a three step sequence for confidence, and it all began with taking action. Um, you know, doing doing the thing that you you want to put your, your mind to, learning just one thing from it, not breaking it down into a million bits and, and berating yourself and everything. Just learn the main thing you can from it. Um, validating yourself, going, congratulations, well done for taking action on that, and then doing the whole thing again. And the more times you do that, the more and more confident you will get. And the more confident you get, the more competence you feel you have and the less fear you have when you go into a situation that's new. When and when is the Nutrition and Fitness Bulletproof call? Just been arranging it today with Lewis, Fanny, very, very, very soon. Um, potentially next week, we're going to do a, uh, a call for those who did Bulletproof Factor earlier this year. Got a bonus call with a high-performance physicality and nutrition coach, Lewis Diaz from Palm Beach in Florida. He'll be able to help you out on the um, food side of stuff, Fanny. I was hoping you'd say Bulletproof Factor. <laughs> Uh, that's it Tony man honestly bullyproofactor.com if you want to get on the waiting list there's only literally I think there's only 50 places on the VIP uh, version of the program because it's there's that's kind of like group coaching online in video online calls I can't do more than 50 at a time on those um, so you and I both know this is the ultimate message to kind of like start wrapping this up on guys you and I both know um, what would improve your life so the question is, why aren't you doing it? Because somewhere, somewhere there, you've probably associated a lot of loss, process, or outcome pain with that thing that you should be doing. So I'm saying to you that today is a great day to sit down and say, what do I really want in my life? And those are the things that we're going to be goal setting on over the next couple of weeks properly, specifically, and then we're going to attack them in the new year. I want to end on a quote, guys. Um, in a second, I've got one more slide, actually. Yeah, focus only on the gains, the joys, and the positive outcomes. Make those louder, and you'll already start having more success. This quote is one of my favorite quotes of all time. Nelson Mandela said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. 
I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. Nelson Mandela, legend. I think he's more than qualified to come out with a quote like that. Um, and that's what I wanted to focus on, overcoming that fear. I'm going to be back on Wednesday evening for the book club for uh, Anthony Mindel's book at Left Brain Turn Right. He's an acting coach from LA. It was a personal development book. Very, very, very good. Uh, you can join me same time, same place at 9 p.m. I'm going to come back on camera. I'm going to have a little debrief. Um, and then I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of homework, uh, which ties into this. Ross, can I say, since I started implementing your advice, I've got two feature films and three short films. Thank you. Boom. There you go, Brian. Well, there you go. See, and that's taking action, mate. And you feel in the fear and do it anyway. Um, congratulations. That's awesome, man. That's really, really good news. Well done for that. Um, maybe James says, maybe write down what you think is good about you. Absolutely. There's an exercise we do in Bulletproof Actor, James, called What's Cool About Me. And you literally, you know, I make people write down 10 things they think are cool about them right now. People want to look for massive things. And you don't need to look for massive things. You will find an abundance of things that are right with you if you look for them. Chances are, though, you're probably focusing on all the things that are wrong with you. And when you ask yourself a disempowering question like, what is wrong with me? Why do I always mess up? Guess what's going to happen? Your brain is like Google. It's going to go out and it's going to find all the shit that you think is wrong with you and why you always mess up and bring it back and smash in the face with it. As opposed to asking yourself empowering questions like, how can I, you know, um, you know, what's the one thing I can do right now that's going to make everything else easier or unnecessary? That's an empowering question. How can I make a positive impact in one person's life today? You know, who could I make smile today? What's the one step I could take, you know, closer to my, to my goals today? Uh, we talked about disempowering questions on my Sunday video. Awesome, Tony, because by default, guys, we all have a default question. By default, we all have a default question. We do. We have like a, a dominant question in our lives that generally is, is, is asked of us subconsciously m multiple times a day. And for most people, that is a negative one. Like, what's wrong with me? When will I ever get out of this job? When will I ever get an acting career? When will I ever find a girl or find a boy? When will I ever? They're all really negative, negative questions. Um, and if you have that repeating over and over again, it's just, you know, it's just going to compound more and more negativity in your life and you're not going to be able to see opportunity in front of you. If you ask yourself positive questions all day, you know, you know, where, where, even, even if it's like, you know, you don't quite rightly know what it is you want, you know, where can I find inspiration to, you know, to figure out what I want right now or, you know, anything that's just like positive and is going to actually like promote creativity and like positive thinking in your head as opposed to drudgery and sadness and darkness. Um, Self-talk is just so critical. So, 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 so critical. And a big part of, of, of the world that plays into that negative self-talk as well is um, a few things actually in the news. If you're watching the news right now, I mean, I don't watch it, but I'm guessing it's going to be full of bad stuff. Um, that can make you feel terrible first thing in the morning if you're looking at 15 headlines that are all rubbish. Um, doing what all your mates are doing is another thing that feeds into into this spiral of, of kind of decline. If you're surrounding yourself by people who are equally as unfulfilled as yourself or equally as out of shape as yourself, you know, you are the average of those five people. We say that all the time. Um, there's lots of things, but internal self-talk, yeah, is a, you know, is, is a big one. Um, if you're asking negative questions and disempowering questions, you're going to live a negative and disempowered life. Um, I want to give you this homework, guys. Um, it's not school. I appreciate that, Steve. But I want you to all go and do this. So you'll know a friend of mine. He brings this out every year. Great guy called Michael Hyatt. Awesome guy. He does a program once a year called Five Days to Your Best Year Ever that's coming out later on in December. But before he launches that program... There's a load of really cool free stuff. So don't think you've got to buy the program. You don't have to. It's something I would recommend, but um, I buy it every single year. But I want you to do the free things that he's giving out because even if you just do these, it's going to give you a lot of clarity in your life and where you need to brush up. Okay, if you go to this web address here, act.network, so it's like, you know, it's like the uh, acts on this uh, website, but it's, it's, a, it's a shortened version, act.network forward slash life score 18 this is only gonna be available until tomorrow it's been available the last few days um it's a slightly different so so this year funny this is a, ever so slightly different 
um, to last year. What Michael does is he tweaks stuff every single year based on research. So I actually end up buying his, I buy his full program every year, even though I've bought it for the last four years running because it's ever so slightly different with different research and different exercises to do. It's all about goal setting. But this life score thing is completely free and effectively will take you less than 10 minutes to do, but it will actually assess and measure how you are doing in all areas of your life from finances to relationships to career to marital stuff if you're married, um, family stuff, every area of your life. And you can um, answer these questions and then get a score at the end of it showing you a breakdown of where you need to focus in 2018 to be more fulfilled or to be better at these things because how do we know you know, what we need to get better at if we don't measure it. And so many people don't measure things in their life, like how they're doing. They check in with themselves like once every two, three years or whatever. This is super good. Act.network forward slash life score 18. If you go to there, it'll take you probably six, seven minutes to do. You pop your email address in, you get the results sent through to you. Um, and you get a video explaining your results and then you get access to some free webinars that Michael's doing next week. Again, I would recommend you get on those for free. You don't have to buy his program, just do the free stuff. If you've got, you know, the dedication to, you know, doing a proper goal setting program for 2018, I'd highly recommend his program. I will be doing it again. Um, and anybody who buys it from him, um, I'll do some kind of like little group call with us all on it uh, for those who've never done it before. Um, but go and do this life score um, because it will just help you get some clarity on what the stuff that we've talked about tonight as well. Maybe where fear has been holding you uh, holding you back. Fanny says, 100% recommend those free webinars. They are really, really good. They're going to be next week. But yeah, act.network forward slash life score 18. So life score 18. Um, go there now after this and just do that life score assessment. Um, tweet me as well, at Ross A. Grant or at Act on This TV. Let me know what score you got and where you're going to start focusing because that might help me uh, kind of plan the next couple of uh, live broadcasts over the next couple of weeks. The other thing I want people to remember is you've got a couple of weeks left still um, to subscribe to my new vlog on YouTube. If you do, I'm going to draw somebody at random on New Year's Eve and I'm going to either pay for their Spotlight subscription for 2018. If you paid for it already, I'm going to just send you the money for it. Uh, or if you're not an actor, I'm going to buy you a cool gift for about 150 quid. Go to youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. And all you've got to do is hit subscribe and then leave a comment on one of the videos. The more comments, so the more videos you watch and, and leave a comment on, the more entries you've got to the prize draw. Every comment is one entry, um, maximum of one, one comment per video. You can't cheat and put 100 comments on each video. <laughs> Brian says, love them, Ross. They're getting really popular, man. Um, I love filming them. It's absolutely awesome. I'm going out to film episode 12 tomorrow. There's 11 episodes so far, but it's behind the scenes of my acting career, voiceover career, life, everything. In the current episode that came out today, I go behind the scenes of voicing a brand new children's animation that comes out in 2018. going to be one of the biggest kids' animations of next year. Uh, you see behind the scenes of that, me working with uh, other voice actors as well. You see me voicing a documentary. Um, you see me working on an online business. I'm, I'm working on for a clothing company. Just everything, basically. Um the ups, the downs, everything in between. So go to youtube.com forward slash watch Ross to subscribe to that. Um, and if it's all right with you guys, I'm going to play you a little uh, a little clip of that 60 second trailer of today's episode to end. But before that, um, let me know if you've got any, any other questions. We've still got a couple of minutes. If you uh, have anything to ask, uh, need any help with anything, um, or you didn't understand anything that we covered tonight um, on those three fears, you'll be able to watch the replay of this literally the minute I uh, I stop the broadcast as well if you want to go back and check those three fears out again um, but anybody got any uh, anything to ask or do you want me to just play the uh, play the clip play the uh, the 60 second trailer of today um, those on Facebook got literally 15 seconds before because for me to end this on Facebook I've got to leave the comment screen unfortunately apologies you Facebook people but if you've got something anything to ask on Facebook let me know um, and I will uh, I will look at it now if my internet decides it's going to load. Cheers, Ross. Hopefully I'll get to Manchester to meet up for a coffee soon. Yeah, we had the Christmas the Christmas market meet up um, at the weekend, Brian. It was hilarious. Really, really good. Went to the Christmas markets in Manchester. So for those who uh, are new to the community or have never been to one, at the start of the month, every Saturday, um, we do a Manchester meet up and a London meet up. I host the Manchester meet up. A um, awesome woman called Melanie hosts the London one. 11 a.m. on a Saturday, the first Saturday of every month. And we just get lots of people down to have fun. Um, talk about the acting industry, drink coffee, eat cake, 
uh, ultimately learn more and just learn how to get further in their acting careers faster. Um, but we had a Christmas one at the weekend where we all went to the Christmas market. It's had mulled wine, chocolate pancakes. Um, Steve had his first mulled wine. <laughs> he said he didn't like it, um, but he said he got used to it after a uh, after a couple of couple of sips. I bloody love mulled wine. I think if you don't like cinnamon, you're probably not going to like mulled wine. But I really enjoy mulled wine, um, and I don't even drink. But mulled wine is just Christmas in a cup, isn't it? Um, so yeah, come to uh, come to the uh, the meetups in the new year, Brian. If you can get yourself down, it was fab, says Helen. It was fab, Helen. Wendy brought homemade cookies that were better than Millie's cookies. Julia brought her own mulled wine as well. Just legendary. Um, so here is a sixty second clip of Watch Ross. If you haven't seen any of these yet, go over to youtube.com forward slash Watch Ross, like we just said. Subscribe. You might be winning that spotlight subscription. Going to play you this sixty second clip. It's a bit bonkers, um, and we do a new feature in this one called Uber's Got Talent, where we make our Uber drivers do acts for us, and we see who's best. We've only had one contestant so far, Bilal, who you'll see at the start. Bloody hilarious. He's a legend. Take care, guys. I'll see you Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Uh, if I can do anything for you, let me know. Until then, bye for now. Oh, no, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> this is what I meant to click. Bye for now. What is your talent, Bilal? Comedy. Comedy is his talent. What are you going to do for us? Tell you the joke. Tell us a joke. Hit it, Bilal. <laughs> feeling good. Pumped. I'm pumped. I'm feeling ready. I'm feeling ready to just smash life. You better pick up. Don't know where he is. Come on, Petch. We're looking out for a red Corsa with someone who looks like Manuel out of Faulty Towers in it. Hey, all right, everybody. <laughs> He keeps trying to touch my knee. I just said on the vlog, this is my favourite studio. Ah, and you're our favourite actor. Next week, on episode 12 of the vlog, we will have been vlogging now for three months. I'm not saying you're the fat controller, Keith, but um, definitely not. <laughs> More Edward. <laughs> that, that is, is talent. <laughs> <laughs>